And finally this evening, ancient artifacts are up for grabs in a hotly contested court case that's drawing the attention of attorneys and museum curators all over the world. The dispute bridges the worlds of art and anti-terrorism and finds the U.S. government taking a most unlikely side. Cynthia Bowers examines the evidence. On the surface, a 1997 suicide bombing at a Jerusalem shopping center and these ancient cuneiform tablets don't have much in common. To understand the connection, you need to first meet Daniel Miller. On that horrifying September day, he was an 18-year-old American exchange student toasting the Jewish New Year when all hell broke loose. As we brought our glasses up together, a suicide bomber uh, carrying two suitcases filled with shrapnel blew himself up about five feet to our right. And I looked down at myself and I realized that I had a five-inch nail lodged in my calf muscle. He still carries scars, both physical and emotional. And when he found out the Palestinian bombers who had killed four people and injured close to 200 others were in fact trained and funded by Iran, he wanted to make that government pay. In all court systems, in all the world, there's general principle of justice and um, of paying for your crimes. And when Miller and several other survivors went after Iran in a U.S. court, they were awarded more than $400 million. When Iran refused to honor the verdict, the plaintiffs started looking for assets to seize and sell. And one of the only things of value they found were these 2,600-year-old Persian tablets on loan to the University of Chicago. My jaw dropped. I don't think anyone else has ever encountered anything like it where a plaintiff has tried to seize items of cultural heritage from another country as compensation. This case, which is still before the court, could set what many see as a dangerous precedent. If artistic and cultural artifacts exhibited in this country could be confiscated, would American museums ever get access to the Dead Sea Scrolls or the treasures of King Tut? It concerns the whole cultural relations that link countries around the world and diplomatic relations. In an odd juxtaposition, the U.S. State Department is backing Iran's right to the tablets. But Daniel Miller says it's important nations who sponsor terror understand their actions may carry a cost. If they hesitated the next time and they didn't do it, then these lawsuits could actually save lives. This isn't the first time conflict, they survived the burning of Persepolis by Alexander the Great. Whether they will survive this latest assault intact remains to be seen. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Chicago.